just complaining about brandy since people didn't watch that shit. <laughs> hey, welcome back to another edition of Ego on Break. I'm your host, Dynamite J. Andrews. Got the Mississippi Madman, Logan Creed. And uh, he was just telling me how big of a Brandy Rhodes fan he is. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> so you might have caught a little bit of that. But yeah, so uh, Ego on Break. Last Ego on Break was uh, we were pretty harsh on AEW. Um, you could change a little bit on this show. Yeah, it could for Not sure. Not for what we was bashing it for last um, time, but something new. Yeah, 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 for sure. Uh, we were uh, surprisingly wrong. Uh, Brandy and Alley did not win the tag team tournament. Mm -hmm. So uh, kudos to AEW for pulling a little swerve on uh, yeah. on us marks. I Brandy guess it was a uh, continued botching moves all through the <laughs> match, but you know they don't call her botching Brandy for nothing. <laughs> so. She has heels, bro. We'll say uh, the new tag team is the bunny and the botcher. <laughs> and they, uh, so the botching bunnies. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, surprisingly, that you know, uh, definitely, lost. I was shocked that uh, they did not win because I really did expect it. Um, so I, I definitely was surprised and glad to see that uh, Ivelisse and Diamante uh, came out on top. So that was pretty cool. Uh, you know, saw Cody get massacred he got and, smoked, bro. <laughs> and lose his uh, TNT championship, which again, hey, way to I go, was, Cody. I you know, um, it, it, it was actually a really good match. I mean, I enjoyed it, not for the fact Cody was getting squashed, but just uh, it was something different. I, I did not expect it. I thought it was going to get a little back and forth match, and you know, Dark Horror was going to botch a spot, and Brody was going to lose, and Cody would be champ. But no, it didn't happen, and uh. Cody's like, hey, if I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose, man. <laughs> he I lost. Wrote a, I read a comment where everybody was talking about how he brought in all these independent guys. And somebody had wrote, so he can beat all these jobbers except Scorpio Sky. Yeah. And he still beats Scorpio Sky, but when it comes to a real opponent that isn't on AEW Dark, he gets smoked. Well, hey, yeah. So, it happens. Yeah. But uh, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. So. And then they beat the hell out of everybody. They did. Uh yeah. For sure, <laughs> including Brandy. If there had been a crowd, I bet that'd have been the that would have turned the fucking dark order to faces. Yeah, <laughs> if that would have been a live crowd, because even the damn crowd that's AEW positive hate Brandy. Yeah. Um, I thought it was cool that the uh, the Andrews chick or whatever who's not in the dark order was there with the dark order. I think she's official now. <laughs> she made forget though. Yeah. You know. um, I like it. I mean, I I I like the dark horses. You know, the get go. Not always a fan of it, but I liked it, and I know that's basically me saying one and doing the other. But uh, I'm I'm just a get I'm just a gimmick guy, man. And the Dark Order is super gimmicky. The only one I like. Well, I like and, two. And I dig it. So. I like uh, the one that used to be. What was his name under the hood? And now he don't have a hood. Uno oh, and uh, Dose. Dose. Yeah, that's right. It was yeah, Dose. Uh, Grayson. Well, Grayson. I like I like Grayson, and I, I like Cabana, and I like Lee. But I can't stand the rest of them. I like five and ten. That's uh Oh well so I don't really know some, those guys. That's some that's some young guys from Georgia area. Um hopefully maybe can get five and ten and uh Sweet. in ego we, we've had yeah, we've had ten here before and so uh I'm a big fan of five, Alan Angels and uh you know the dude's super good worker, so hopefully get to see them here in Ego again. Uh one returning, one debuting. Uh, but I would love to get them as the Dark Order. Yes, that would 15. be that would be amazing <laughs> if we can get fifteen from the Dark Order. So, <laughs> what a tag team name, fifteen. How'd you get that? He's five. I'm ten. Do math. Oh yeah, if you got to do that long division, you're if screwed. It's, if it's Common Core, they yeah. come out as twenty-two. Yeah, you know, so. <laughs> uh, but overall, it's good. So uh, you got results from AEW Dark? Yeah, uh, I'm kind of there. This guy does it kind of a weird way, but I can give you the matches. Okay. Uh, Storm Thomas and Dimitri Jackson versus Best Friends. That was pretty cool. I like to see the, uh, you know, the the um, aggression coming out in the Best Friends. Yeah, but no hugging. It was cool to see uh, Frankie Thomas's cousin Storm. Um, not sure if they're really cousins, but they should be. So. And uh, I pitched this to AEW, and I said, uh, you know, they should be like a tag team, Frankie Thomas and Storm Thomas. They could be a Thomas two. Uh, but not you know not the Thomas two T W O but a Thomas two like T O O, 
So I uh, thought that could be a fun play on words, Sweet. but uh, I doubt that ever happens because why would they listen to me? It know? wasn't a bad match, though. I, I match. thought the match was pretty decent, so uh, it was pretty cool. So what do we get next? Uh, Sean Spears versus mm. versus Jesse Sorensen. I really enjoyed this match. I do, too. Um, and I don't know if we've talked about it on here, maybe predicting like if AEW brought back a full horseman group or whatever, but I must say that I would love to see Tully have Sean and Jesse Sorensen and maybe the Butcher and the Blade. Like, could you see that as a four horseman group? That'd be pretty good because... But they keep saying FTR. Yeah, well, I think you could have a cool, like, war game style with Arn having a... uh, a His own version. Yeah, so you could have, like, Cody and FTR. Midnight versus Midnight. Yeah, you know, have Cody and FTR and, you know, whoever and uh, uh, Zack Ryder or Matt Cordona, whatever, versus, like, the Butcher and the Blade, Sorsen and... uh, Sean Spears, I think that'd be really cool. Do a little war games or something. But uh, Jesse Sorensen really impressed me. I, uh, I thought he was really the reason good. I didn't recognize him. He's lost his hair. Uh, he, he completely the changed beard. his body, man. Like, his tattoos because he had basically a football high school guy. He was a little him. like I'm the high school quarterback. I mean, that's why when you're like Jesse Sorensen, and I'm like, I recognize the name, and I'm like, I saw the guy, and I'm like, that can't be yeah. the same guy. He and got his neck broke. Yeah, the, in, they, they talked yeah. about it during the show. And I was like, oh, good, is him? Well, I think bad. it was a, uh, uh, oh, crap. Shima Zion, what's his name? Yeah, he he, he did a uh, was, dive in his leg yep. and landed on top of his head right. and broke his neck. And that was like his debut match, remember? Yeah. So that was real messed up. Yep. So. But yeah, cool match. Watch that match for sure. Yeah, so so uh, the next match was Red Velvet versus Mail. I enjoyed this match. It was short. That was the reason I it. It was. It wasn't uh, I was beginning to hate it because I was like, God, why are they just like giving up her size? But Red Velvet was super aggressive. So, I mean, I guess it was okay. But then it got a little better and I dug it. So, uh, kudos to both ladies. Yeah. Uh, then you had D3 versus Lance Archer. And this guy didn't get jacked. But when up. I saw him <laughs> pop up on the poster or whatever, I was like, is that Alex Cruz? <laughs> <laughs> he favored Alex Cruz, but uh, unfortunately, it was not Alex Cruz. Uh, sorry, Cruz. Maybe you can get squashed by him next time. But uh, it was not. It was D three. And he got smoked, bro. Uh, and Taz is like, you know, if you're gonna give yourself a number behind D, why not D one? I'm like, well, uh, yeah. you know, check out D one on uh, on YouTube and check out uh, D one. You stupid fool. That's a pretty cool song. So, uh, well, D3 got D3 D3 got D3 demolished. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think about the fat guy that got beat up first? I don't know who that was. He was in the back, back eating on a snack, and next thing he knows, he's getting drugged to the ring. He's like, what the hell's going on? I don't hmm. know how he got to the back. Yeah, <laughs> Probably somebody's buddy, you know? Yeah. But, uh, next was Lu- This was a way better match than I thought it was going to be. Luther and Serpentico mm-hmm. versus The Initiative. Yep. And uh, I'm a fan of the initiative. I don't I'm actually like, a fan of both these teams, actually. They did a really good yeah. job. Yeah, it, it was probably best one of the better matches on the show, yeah. if not the best, maybe. But I mean, now Serpentico officially has a win for two AEW, does he? Him and Luther are two for two, really? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, I, I thoroughly enjoyed the tag match, though. old Dr. Luther. Yeah, man, he threw that freaking spinning roundhouse. I'm like, whoa, holy, well. Fat guy got yeah, moves. Hey, that surprised <laughs> me. I've only seen him in two matches. And the first one I saw, it was not good. You've seen him in more. He was uh, back no, in I'm the saying day. Here, yeah, here, here, here. Say back in the day with all, with like uh, with FMW or whatever, with all the hardcore stuff and stuff. He was Dr. Luther there, like yeah, with the yeah, mask yeah, and stuff yeah, on. Yeah, I know. I'm just saying here, I've only mm. seen him in two matches. And the first yeah. match was absolutely horrible. This match actually this was pretty this decent. really made up for it. Uh, the good for Serpentico. Yeah, hey. Because uh, former, I don't know if he's still the current Elevate champion. I have no idea. Uh, but if he's not, he's a former Elevate champion. Yeah. So way to go. Next was uh, Nyla Rose versus Kylie and King. What do you think about Nyla and Vicky together? I dig it. It wasn't bad, but it's like I don't think Vicky promo was very strong because she's used to working. She a crowd needs people. I said the same thing. And she paused, waiting for a reaction, and I'm just like, yep. there's nobody there to give you the reaction, and the people that were there didn't give her a reaction. Yeah. So there. Like, That's one thing I did notice. There was less reactions mm-hmm. being showcased from camera work, like 
they were like picking up on the crowd doing stuff and i know the crowd's just guys they were but just loud yeah yeah like uh, i didn't notice that vicky got none and no I, and I, she's like waiting there's nothing her character needs yeah, a, re a reaction she definitely does but i mean uh nyla won the match right against kylene king uh kylene isn't bad she was impressive i i, I dug uh, it i would seen her like one other time she she's one of those i think she'll be good and give her a year yeah she just needs a little more work yep and i'm sorry this team here i i just cannot get behind the gun club are they just not goofy or stupid I was hard. or just uh, versus Baron Black and Frank Stone. You know what it reminded me of? Remember Miz and uh, the stunt double? Yeah. Okay, if Miz wasn't trying to be serious, uh, uh, that's who it reminded me of. Like, Austin is just like a mini version of Billy, except like, hey, I'm going to be you, but not as good. Just, I, I was not impressed. I'm, either. I've seen this first time I, I guess the first time I paid attention to it, not uh, impressed at all. I know them too. And I could tell Barry and Black, Black and Frank Stone were trying, and it's just like, it was like, I was more mad at the pros than yeah. I was at them, because they were trying. And, and Frank, I think he's, like, Frank Stone has something. Like, there's something about him that I like. Yeah, he's just big, mean-looking yeah, something. I bitch. saw someone say that uh, he reminded he reminded them of Bad News Brown. And I was like, oh, yeah, I can make yeah, it see I that. Can see that. Uh, like he's just kind of straightforward, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna beat the hell out yeah. of you. He's just got that look, like I will rip your face off and put it back on upside down. So, like he he needs to find like Sylvester Turkey and like yeah. Sylvester and him like reform the team of Sylvester and Elijah Burke. Like, <laughs> but I, as far as the other two, just, and I usually like Billy Gunn, but him and his son are just they not a good team. Not, I'm not a fan of it at all. Sorry, you know. But uh, take a guess who won, you know. Yep. Gun Club. Now, I will say there was a, a point there where Billy's like, get up, get down, you know what's coming next, and then it didn't come, so I thought yeah, that was pretty funny. but he's done that each week. No, Every time you. he works, he does it. He, I he, normally skip it. He so. ain't hit his finishing <laughs> forever. Uh, next was Heather Monroe mm -hmm. versus Penelope Ford. Pretty good match. Yeah, I thought it was okay. Uh, again, I'm a huge fan of Penelope and Kip, and... Uh, I love the fact that Kilt becomes the cheerleader when she's out there. Like, so like he puts the whole gimmick on and everything. So that's pretty cool. And uh, honestly, like I could see like if they were going to try to put Penelope with someone, the Heather Monroe shape may not be bad. They kind of similar look, similar style. They kind of had similar gear. So uh, I thought it'd be cool. Like, hey, let's put her with with them. Um, that's what I'm saying. They got some good women. Yeah. They're just unfortunately focusing on the wrong ones mm -hmm. but uh penelope won of course uh should have but very good match I, absolutely uh santina santana and ortiz versus the metro version uh, brothers <laughs> deuce and domino know. light <laughs> where my tongue went there but yeah uh this was actually way better than i thought but i'd never seen the metro brothers before i'd never heard of them. i've seen them I feel like I've seen them on a poster, at least semi in our area. Maybe not in Mississippi, but maybe like, you know, within the surrounding yeah, states. Before. We probably saw it on Facebook somewhere. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had heard of them, but that was the first time seeing them. But uh, it was just Chris and JC, and I think it was Chris and Santana were in there at one point just doing a uh, trade punches, mm -hmm. and they looked like they were just murdering <laughs> each other. I was like, I, I said, I, I ain't gonna say the rest of the match was great, but that right. one point had me because I was like those looks licks looked real yeah so that part really got me of course our T's and santana won and i'm gonna talk about this at the end but just remind me all right uh ricky starks versus sean dean and i, I like this guy he's i do too he's military right mm -hmm. and uh it was a little botchy during the match but nothing that couldn't be no. improved upon uh, uh, this was one of those I started to say this on AEW because it's not as much flip and flopping, and it's like they're not used to people selling. And now yeah. that people are starting to sell, they're getting a little miscued with it. Does could that be. make sense? That could, could, could you know? be for sure. You're like you're turning around waiting for him to feed into the next move, and the guy's like, "Oh, I'm actually selling this. My bad." Yeah. So and I, I like just just slow down a little bit. That's really all it felt like to me. But as far as the match went up, I, I thought it was okay. It was a little sloppy, like you said, but uh, it was good. I'm a Ricky Starks fan. Like I said, Sean Dean, like, there's some potential there. So. What do you think about the Rochambeau finisher he's using? That's what it's called. 
I don't love it. You know, it reminds me of the Dominator that Farouk used to use. I, my, my, th my, this is my thought, and again, it's there's a lot of moves like this. Mm. Uh, one mistiming misstep could be realization. Yeah. But I mean, is it unique? Absolutely. Yeah, I just, I, I like the look of it, but I agree it is kind of dangerous. You got to be very careful. Uh, Jake Hager versus Snurris. <laughs> Probably the best Marco stunt match ever. Well, I enjoyed the match. Um, I, I think Marco is a guy that should be in the same category of Orange Cassidy, not used a lot. Um, I think this was the perfect thing to use him for. Um, I love the size difference. I love the fact that you knew there ain't no chance in hell. He didn't uh, get anything, did he? Yeah. Did he? What he got a lock up. Well, that don't count. He got a chop. Oh, that don't count neither. Um, that, okay, he, that he, he got bumped a, for. He got a duck. Well, he wasn't supposed to. He okay, got a duck and a float ask. under. I, I don't the, want The him best to thing that, 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 like, the best part of that was there was a series where Marco was shining um, and he slid out and whatever, and Jake got, like, he got off his game. He got upset. Um, which, that's what that should have been that match was exactly what it should have been my only complaint about that match was it probably wasn't vicious enough oh no i agree it was a little too jokey for me yeah. like i think once hager like lost it like he should have lost it and i thought when he flipped over and like got like hurt his ankle i thought that was just set up for him to like put the ankle lock on and just torture him but he's not using the ankle lock now he's using that choke yeah uh so. i love that choke yeah, I do um, too, but I wish he would kind of flip back and forth in between. Because mm -hmm. everybody, everybody's like, you'll only get this one finisher. I'm like, no, technically any moves a finisher. Yeah. And he's just, a submission guy. Like, so. I just would have loved to see, like, Marco hanging by one leg as the swagger yeah, standing yeah. up. Like, twerking on Marco's, like, you know, flinging around. and I'd have picked him up in that choke, just swung him around like a black hole slam, hit the black hole slam, and then choke yeah. him out. Yeah. You know, because Marco's so light, you can do oh, anything man, you yeah. want with him. But I mean, uh, Marco's great for a highlight video. Yeah. He had him in the gorilla press, and I heard Tony Giovanni goes, Please, dear God, don't throw him on the floor. <laughs> but now, yeah. like the commentator team really did a good job putting Marco over. So. Yeah, they're, they're trying. I mean, there's always so much you can mm -hmm. do. Uh, next was Frankie Kazarian versus Kip Saban. Uh, this match. I thought it was going to be better than what it was. Uh, yeah, me too. I I'm going to leave it that. Like It was very slow, and they were trying to do a lot of technical. And for that, I'm sorry, you need a crowd. And if your crowd isn't into that match, it really affects that mm -hmm. match. And, I mean, it literally had me bored at points. Yeah, I skipped through a lot of it. The end is so, about the only part that got me. Yeah. Because uh, I didn't really, I didn't think Azarian was going to win. I really thought Kip, they were yeah. going to keep pushing Kip. And I personally think they screwed yeah, up. They I agree. Uh, so... Like, uh, SCU doesn't need wins to no, be over. No. You know? And to me, that would be the point of Kazarian losing is that he's now become a tag wrestler and he should, mm -hmm. and to me, just lose singles matches. Yep. You know, unless they're doing a real big push on SCU right. and they're not. No. So, I, but I, I really think. But again, that, push that the team, should, yeah. not the singles, mm -hmm. not, you know. And last was uh, Joey Janela and Sonny Kiss versus the Hybrid 2. Now, this is the match I made it to before we started filming, and I did not see this match. Uh, so uh, you're going to have to it was take a, a It was a very good match. Uh, it's probably one of the best ones I've seen Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela have. I like both teams. Uh, Sonny Kiss does a moonsault to the floor. Oh, nice. So there, there is a bunch of spots in it. it. This was the one that had the flippy stuff in it, but it actually was telling stories because they were beating the hell out of each other, and they were selling stuff. And uh it really made both teams to me because it if they were like okay i want to be on tv this is the match i yeah. they could show them and be like okay put this feud on tv we just smoked this show and they did i mean it was really the show too it really earned the main event because even when i heard that was the main event i'm just like really and then i saw it and i was like okay i was wrong <clears throat> yeah yeah because i mean in reality like you would think maybe it was going to be kip and uh Kazarian, mm -hmm. but no, I mean, uh, I, I'm, I'm going to watch it. I do want to see it. Like I said, I'm a fan of both teams. I, you know, Joey Janela reminds me so much of... Um, when you see the finish... Uh, of Jimmy Garvin, like, and I don't know why. I guess just the look. Well, but, the finish is Jack Evans and, um, shit, Sonny Kiss. Mm -hmm. 
the finish is this really crazy roll up like the only person that could have done this roll up was is these two <laughs> like because they're so acrobatic yep. you know and they're they can just bend like right. that and even taz points it out like how the hell he pulled that off yeah. he, and, but that's jack evans strong point like that guy gets put in moves and you're just like nobody i've been a fan of jack evans since generation next yeah like dude is phenomenal like I remember watching him and Brian Danielson. Remember that match? And Brian literally had his head <laughs> under his butt. Yeah. And he was making him damn near sniff his own butt crack. And Dude like, is flexible for sure. I'm like, that. that so, anybody else would have broken half. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, so, I mean, uh, you know, we, we were pretty, like I said, we were pretty rough on AW last week. This week, not so rough. I mean, I think they, they definitely stepped up and kind of got back in the swing of things. A lot of the story and stuff was there. Like, they were trying to make stuff make sense. So... Well, I, here's one thing I read. I, I was probably saying remind me of, but uh, before I watched the show, well, I was gonna watch it last night, and I was just really tired and I fell asleep. But I was reading comments under it before I watched. Yeah. And everybody was more or less saying, "Look, it ain't we hate the show. It's just make it less predictable." Yep. And this week they kind of did. Yeah, I mean, because uh, uh, I don't think everybody expect. Like I almost expected. Um, I the thought Lucha, in them to win. I, I smooth thought that I was like, oh, this is their first win, yep. and then they lost, and I was like, wow, okay. And then with the, like I said, the Kip thing, yep. I really thought Kip was going to win that, uh, but I think this week they improved a lot. Yep. they really did. And I mean, you're seeing guys get a little more and a little more. And again, yep. you you know you you have to build your main talent. Oh no, you got. So yeah. I understand, but also by not just destroying these people by having the commentators put them over and you know like they kept saying like oh some of these guys that are being paired together like you may find the next set of guys or whatever like, they were still giving these guys stuff you know over commentary and they're working so it's not like they're just getting squashed but i mean i dig a, like it's we're not able to watch mlw and like to me aw dark is where it's at yeah, i don't right watch now. dynamite i mean i probably should but i don't i just don't have time um but i, I dig the aw dark i dig yeah. it because i know people on there you know i think that's what you know makes me uh get behind is like that's when i got behind mlw was i knew a lot of those guys yeah. so or at least you'd heard of them yeah uh i know they're they supposedly have some stuff being filmed coming up okay so hopefully it's soon uh, I know a lot of people are struggling trying to get shows out there. Uh, they're going to have another one at the Hideaway coming up, and I just saw right before I got off work <coughs> there was going to be a last man standing match, which was a, mo a match I actually fed to JD and mm -hmm. uh, Vladimir Vladimir Koloff. Yep. That's and, happening. Uh, You're going to get uh, Van Vicious versus uh, Mr. Smackums for the uh, combat title. Um, I know that match is happening. Um, is Fury on the card this time? Yes, versus El Fuego. Fuego. Oh, sweet. Um, I'm trying to remember. No, Wes wasn't on that this time. Um, uh, I'm trying to remember all I saw. Dude. Uh, the American uh, Infidel, Scott Patterson, is taking on uh, the guy that attacked him at the last show. And I'm sorry, I forgot your name. Um, it's on the tip of my tongue, but I can't think of it. Uh, he wrestled for us once, and he kind of did like a Wolverine-type gimmick. And uh, I believe the guy was in like the soft core tournament of death or whatever. No, I thought you was going to hold another. No, 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 no. Okay. Um, but I, I can't remember his name, and I'm so sorry that I forgot it. But that match is happening. Uh, RJW, uh, one of the Ego uh, trainees, he will be making his debut there in a triple threat uh, match with John Allister, who is a uh, trainee of Sir Mo. Is he like a martial arts mm -hmm. guy? Okay, I saw and, a promo uh, last night and I thought so. Uh, Marvelous, uh, Skylar Marvelous, um, who was uh, the guy under the hood attacking people there at CWL in their videos and over in the events. Um, that's going on, and then uh, uh, Battles on Championship Wrestling is having a uh, First Lights Out event. Um, this is by invitation only. If you want to know about it, message the Battles on page. Doing something a little different, trying to put wrestling back. And uh, we're going after the speakeasy style, where if you don't know about it, uh, you ain't invited. You know, so um, it's, a, it's a top secret. 
and uh so top secret you're putting it online yep top secret put it online but we're not advertising it um we're just saying hey if you want to know about it message us if, if there's an opportunity for you to get invited um then you get invited you mm -hmm. know so uh, a little something a little different yeah. so uh, we'll see how that works and uh ego is still as of now we're just uh planning on the southern eight making things happen for that hopefully it will happen um we will let you guys know in the, in the forecoming weeks if that's going to happen right now the building has not told us no but they're not renting it to us yet either they haven't opened the doors back to have people inside um right now with the limits being 20 to 40 people 50 people whatever uh you know we're trying to skirt around that but hopefully we can get some to some type of deal worked out maybe have it outside or, or something i don't know maybe leave the doors open and get some air moving around in there or something maybe there's something we could do with that but we're still looking forward to that first saturday in november i believe it's november okay. 7th got an all-star cast of guys a roster guys not a cast roster of, uh, of wrestlers fighters coming in and i'm really looking forward to it i'm so hoping that we don't have to cancel it because uh, we haven't canceled one since the beginning and i think this is like the ninth or tenth year so really looking forward to this really hoping that it happens and uh, we're going to do everything we can do to make it happen but unfortunately when you rent a building from someone else it's not up to you so yeah and our lovely government yep uh i got a question for you i was listening to something when Arn anderson he was asked a question if you could pick any person to have been in the four horsemen who would you pick who do you think he said like old or new uh back in the day and when he said it, it, it made perfect sense. Ted DiBiase. <clears throat> I can see that. He said because he lived the lifestyle, he looked the part, and he could wrestle. I would have loved to seen Gino Hernandez in it. Mm -hmm. Gino could have been in there. Um, honestly, I think you could have did... Um, man, what was that guy's name? Al Perez. I think Al Perez could have been cool in there. Um... Let me just add a little different flavor to it, you know. Um, I always thought it'd been cool if Dusty would have went heel and been part of him, but he never. I never. I don't remember Dusty being heel besides before well, the, when he was heel. You know the cool I mean? thing about having us like this heel group, they had to have the baby faces to make it work. <coughs> I, I, but you know, honestly, the thing about it, they could have flipped roles literally with Dusty and Ric Flair. Ric Flair would yeah. went face and Dusty went heel. But would it have worked? Possible. Well, you thing. don't know. Do you I try it? I don't know. I don't think it would have worked. Yeah, like I say, I don't know. Do you try it? So, yeah, I, I don't know if it would have worked. But, you know, who knows? Um, but, yeah, so uh, that's been this episode of Ego on Break. Uh, if you're in the path of the hurricane or if the hurricane has passed you and done damage, uh, we hope everybody makes it out safe. Yeah, my dad's um, in it right now. Take so. cover. It's going to be rough. Uh, yeah, we were. happened. Huh? It's already happening. Well, it's happening. Yeah. Um, we were uh, actually together the day of Hurricane Katrina. So uh, I guess today is a little, uh, uh, yeah, for us. So I guess we're going to be here uh, on the same day. So uh, stay safe, guys. And until next time, watch wrestling. Watch wrestling.